Christ is risen. Alleluia. Such joy and, and excitement in, in the room this morning as we uh, gather in that Easter joy and also in the joy of Mother's Day. I, I know I see a lot of uh, families intentionally uh, worshiping together with mom here and we uh, celebrate that and, and give thanks for uh, the gift of mothers this morning. Uh, a special welcome to our visitors. Oh, we're glad that you've joined us this morning and we pray that uh, you would find uh, in our worship the time to be strengthened and, and filled in Jesus. Uh, we would be privileged if you would use one of the information cards in your pew to share more about yourself that we then in turn could share more about the programs and the ministries of our congregation. Uh, lots of exciting things going on. I know some have discovered the, the plant sale by the youth uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, lots more neat things that you can find out about in your bulletin. We also uh, rejoice next weekend will be Confirmation Sunday already. Um, can't believe that. We have uh, 12 of our uh, youth who will uh, be making a public affirmation of the faith that has been there since their baptism, and they rejoice uh, in confirming what God has done uh, in them in uh, the worship service, in the 1030 worship service uh, next Sunday. Uh, so many uh, neat things going on, and, and would just love to, to have uh, you being a part of all that we do here uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, this morning, uh, also, uh, our theme for this morning, uh, the fourth Sunday after Easter, which happens to fall on Mother's Day, uh, is the Good Shepherd. It's traditionally Good Shepherd Sunday, as we take a, a part of the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John and think about that uh, wonderful imagery of Jesus as the, the Good Shepherd. Uh, we use uh, David's words in uh, the 23rd Psalm again. Uh, as that shepherd language describes so wonderfully uh, our Lord. Uh, and we pray that that uh, would go with you into your life this morning. You'll, again, you'll hear uh, shepherd throughout our, our readings, throughout our, our hymns, uh, our Creator's create Crusaders songs. You will hear uh, those wonderful message, including uh, from our opening hymn this morning, Saper, Savior, Like a Shepherd Lead Us, hymn number 711. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, that they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Isaiah wrote, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on our Savior Jesus the iniquity of us all. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father, seeking his forgiveness, one for us by Jesus. Lord, we truly have wandered away from our shepherd like lost sheep. We have sinned in what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Yet you sent your son Jesus to be our savior. Since Jesus is also God himself in human flesh and blood, he has become our true shepherd, going out into the wilderness to find us when we were lost, and who then brings us home rejoicing. Forgive our wandering sins, dear Lord, and let us rejoice every day over the Savior who has found us when we were lost. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Probably one of the most treasured uh, sections in all of Scripture. Uh, the 23rd Psalm is that uh, beautiful pictorial language of the Lord, as shepherd, us, 
in those beautiful pastures, and so we read them responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Please be seated. It is indeed uh, in that love of God, uh, the praise that our Lord does save, uh, that we celebrate this morning. It is the reason that we sing. It's the reason that we gather together as God's people this morning. And we celebrate that again this morning. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from the death the shepherd of your sheep, Grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you to rise for the reading of our Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will free, flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, Truly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
Lord Jesus, it's in that promise that because of you and your death, we will rise. The promise, the hope and the assurance of eternal life in Jesus and Jesus alone. Lord, as we gather in that hope and that confidence in the joy, we pray that you would open your word to our hearts this morning. Speak to us. Speak to us those words of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is kind of an interesting Sunday. Um, in the church year, in the three-year revolving lectionary, the, the assigned Sundays that we go through uh, our, our readings, the fourth Sunday after Easter is known as Good Shepherd Sunday. It uses in each of the, the three-year cycle part of uh, the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, which is the, the Good Shepherd chapter. It goes on uh, as Jesus continues to unpack that uh, analogy. And each one sort of captures a, a different component. In fact, it's rather challenging. In our reading this morning, Jesus didn't call himself the Good Shepherd, did he? He called himself the door. He's the door or the gate of the sheep pen. Later he calls himself the gatekeeper and the good shepherd. I mean, it's really quite a mixed metaphor, really. And then layer on that that it's Mother's Day, which it happens to, because of the, the date of, of Easter, coincide this year. So I'm renaming this morning Mixed Metaphor Sunday. <laughs> I have door, shepherd, sheep, and mothers. Let's see if you can put that one together, Pastor. Let's give it a try. What do sheep and children have in common? Val, you can have first shot at this. They wander. They wander. <laughs> yep. And it, it, and it is part of, of the underlying theme of the analogy. Sheep wander. Children wander. Sometimes following and sometimes just going on their own way. I'm... I'm told you can't actually drive sheep. You can't get behind them and get them to go anywhere. They just kind of wander. Parenting feels rather much the same way, doesn't it? All right, so sheep and children wander. What else do we have? They're both dirty. They're both dirty. <laughs> it's true. I mean, when we all think of, of lambs inside and all neatly groomed, you ever seen, living in Illinois, you, you learned all sorts of things in some of our people who had sheep. Um, when sheep are outside, they're dirty. <laughs> they're rolling in, in their pen and in their mud and all sorts of other stuff that gets in the mud. And they're rather dirty animals. I'm told that some of the best sheep shearers actually use wool light. No kidding. To, to clean the sheep before you shear them. It helps them groom much better. Kids, pretty much the same way, right? Well, they're, they're nice and clean inside for a while, but they get to be a mess. All right, so we've got, they wander, they're dirty. Anyone want to try another one? They cry a lot. They cry a lot. <laughs> uh, um, Sheep are, are kind of interesting. We all think of sheep with... Um, when sheep get older, much less pleasant sound. Surprisingly loud. From this tiny little, what we think is a cute sheep. And children are kind of the same way, aren't they? It's cute at first when they start talking. And you know, they kind of get a little more loud and, and a... Maybe a little more annoying? Sorry, kids. What else? What's another connection point? Wolfgang. 
they depend on their mothers. They are rather helpless animals. Um, wool is great to make sweaters and clothing out of. It's not much of a defense. Um, they're very needy. They're very helpless animals and very much are dependent. Uh, dependent on each other and dependent on uh, their shepherd. Finally, it's the shepherd who, who protects. It's the shepherd who uh, provides. It's the shepherd who uh, leads. So they're rather, let's see, wandering, uh, helpless, dirty, uh, loud animals. And yet, none of those points are actually the connecting point for the gospel today. The connecting point that Jesus uses is something very different. Sheep and children know the voice of their shepherd. Children know the voice of their mother. Let me explain. Can I have the Hartle women, please? Mother and daughters. It seemed fitting on Mother's Day. Can I have you guys come forward and help me this morning? And I'm going to pick another random mother. I'm going to pick Mrs. Mueller. <laughs> she was stuck saying yes. I asked her before. It was kind of... Okay, girls, I want you over there. Moms, I want you over here. Okay. Question number one. Which one is your mother? You sure? Yeah. How do you know? She looks, she looks like your mother, right? <laughs> Good. Seems like an obvious question, right? We, we know you know your mother. Do you know your mother's voice? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. I want you guys to face that way. No peeking. No peeking. You can look that way as long as you don't look. But <laughs> All right, each one of them is going to say, let's see, good morning, Sarah and Aaron. And you have to tell me, did your mom talk first or second, okay? All right. Good morning, Sarah and Aaron. Good morning, Sarah and Aaron. You sure it was second? Yeah. We're positive. Yeah. You're right, it was. <laughs> you know the voice of your mother. Even when you didn't see her, you still knew it was your mom, right? You know her voice. That's all I really needed right now. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Good job. Thanks, moms. You know, it's true. Thank, yep, absolutely. It, it seems like a simple analogy, but it really is so profound. Kids know the voice of our mothers. I was trying to pick two similar voice tones, too. Some of our mother's voices stick out a little more profoundly in large groups. Kids, do you know which mothers those are? We're not going there, right? But we do, you really do. It's amazing, you can be in a large crowd and we, you hear your voice of your mother, you just know it. Did you know that sheep are actually the same way? That after a long time in a relationship with the shepherd, Sheep know their shepherd. Sheep know the voice uh, of their shepherd. In, in Jesus' day, it seems like they were probably putting their sheep together sort of uh, in groups. There was probably sort of a common pen area. Notice that in the uh, reading, there's a gatekeeper, and the gatekeeper is different from the shepherd. The gatekeeper lets that particular shepherd in. The shepherd would call out, and his sheep, it seems to indicate in our reading, would actually separate from the rest of the sheep and follow their shepherd. How did they know it was their shepherd? Well, over all that time together, sheep learned to recognize the voice of the shepherd, and that was all that was necessary. Even sheep know that voice of the shepherd. But in the end, it's really not about voices. It's not about the voice of Angel or Bonnie. It's not about the actual voice of the shepherd. You see, it's about relationships. Think about it for a moment. When the sheep hear that voice, they know that the, the voice 
or the person behind that voice is the one who protects, the one who provides, the, the one who cares. The same thing with, with our moms. Aaron and Sarah knew that that was their mom, but more than just recognizing the voice, they know that she is the one who loves them and provides for them and nurtures them and cares for them and, okay, a couple times maybe corrects them, but, but all because she loves them, all because they are in that relationship, mother and child, so to us. The point of our gospel lesson this morning is not really about voices, it's not really about sheep. It's about those who in, are in a relationship with Jesus Christ and those who are not. You know, so often as uh, we live uh, as those challenged uh, sheep, as we listen to, to so many voices, and I see so many moms and, and dads, I here in the world that we have uh, so many voices as well, the challenge is really who are we going to listen to? There's lots of voices, lots of differing voices. You know, we read in Isaiah, all we like sheep have gone astray, we do wander. Like it or not, we'll go off and, and follow other voices. We don't always listen. We should. Just like sheep, just like children, we sometimes just don't listen. Mom says, it's hot, don't touch. I was always the kid who had to touch. Isn't that an analogy for sin? God says, don't touch. And we just have to do it anyway. Mom says, tie your shoelaces or you're going to trip and fall. I don't. And I do. God says, do these things so that in your walk with, with me you don't trip and fall along life's way. I don't. And I do. You see, in our walk with the Lord, in that spiritual journey of life, we are way more like sheep. We are way more like children than we would like to admit. There's so many other voices saying other things and drawing us away. Other voices in the world claiming that they have the ultimate truth. Not Jesus, not Christianity. Truth is here. Other voices claiming that salvation is found other ways, in other people and in other lifestyles. This is the way to God. No, this is the way to God. Other voices that claim that the rules have changed. Yeah, it used to be that way, but times are modern, and that doesn't apply anymore. There are new rules, new truths, new ways to live. So who do we listen to? In all the voices and in all the people claiming all sorts of things, who do I listen to? But remember, it isn't about the voice. It's about the relationship. I know the voice 
because I've been listening to that voice for a long time. And I know the Lord. And I know just how much he loves me. The good shepherd laid down his life for me. He was crucified on a cross. Even though I wandered, even though I'm dirty and smelly and precisely because I am helpless, I'm going to lay down my life for you. I love you that much. It's about that relationship, the trust. God, you have my best interest in heart. And that when you tell me something, I know it's for my good, and I know that because I know you, and I know that you know me. God, you know me better than I know me. You know the numbers of hairs on my head. You know the thoughts in my mind. And Lord, I know you. You've shown yourself to me. You've spoken to me. You see, today is about relationships. Not just about sheep and shepherd, not just about mother and children. They're both analogies of that much deeper truth. Our relationship with God. I'm thankful for all of those relationships. A shepherd and sheep, mothers and children. I'm so thankful for Mother's Day. I don't think they had Mother's Day in Jesus' time. I don't think Hallmark was quite in business yet. Jesus used shepherd in shape. We can use mothers and in children. So, happy Mother's Day and happy Good Shepherd Sunday. And the message is really the same. Treasure that relationship. Treasure the relationship that, that you have with each other. Treasure the relationship that we have with God. And then listen to your mother. And listen to the shepherd. Amen. <laughs>